Welcome to the Eddie Hyatt Podcast. I am your host and teacher, Eddie Hyatt, and I'm so glad you've joined me again today as we begin a new series, Teaching from Paul's Letter to the Ephesians. Uh, I would say probably one of the most popular books of the New Testament. Uh, it is, Paul emphasizes who we are in Christ. He talks about the church. So, you know, the book of the letter to the Colossians has been called Paul's full length portrayal of Christ. But if Colossians emphasizes the Christ of the church, Ephesians emphasizes the church of Christ. And so in Ephesians, we get a revelation of who we are as God's people. And there are some very powerful truths that we are going to delve into. Now, my approach is I'm going to select different verses. I'm not going to try to uh, expound on every verse, but I'm going to go to particular verses that I believe are so significant and important for us today. Uh, this letter that Paul wrote to the Ephesians, Ephesus is a real city in Asia Minor in present-day Turkey. At the time of Paul's writing, he probably wrote this around the year 62, somewhere around A.D. 62 to 64. He actually wrote it from prison in Rome. Uh, there are four of Paul's letters that are called prison epistles, which he wrote while imprisoned uh, in Rome. He was under house arrest. And you can read about this in the final chapter of Acts. The final chapter of Acts, the final verses of Acts, ends with Paul under house arrest in Rome awaiting trial before Caesar. And so while he was there, he had been there when he when the Act when Luke wrote Acts, he had been there for two whole years. And so during this time, we don't know exactly how long this imprisonment lasted, because Luke ends Acts while Paul is still in prison. But we know that he wrote four letters, uh, to three to churches, one to an individual. He wrote a letter to, to the church in Ephesus, to the church in Colossae, which was about 100 miles from Ephesus, uh, to Philippi, which was in another area uh, of Macedonia. But then also he wrote a letter to an individual by the name of Philemon, who was a resident of Colossae. Now, Ephesus was the major city in, in uh, Asia Minor. It was a commercial center. Uh, it was a religious center. One of the seven wonders of the ancient world was in Ephesus, the massive, magnificent temple dedicated to the female goddess called Artemis. The Greeks called her Artemis. Um, the Romans called her Diana. The, uh, the the King James Version will use the, the, the word Diana. The, some of the newer versions will use Artemis, talking about the same individual, the same goddess. And uh, the whole economy of the city was based on the thousands of religious tourists, the devotees of Artemis, who came there, a constant stream coming there to worship at her shrine. And this is where Paul went to preach the gospel. And uh, and you can read about it in Acts chapter 19, had a very powerful impact in that pagan city as he preached Jesus Christ, so much so that, that it was also a center of magic and the occult. And there was such a work of God and so many people turning to Jesus that they had a book burning. Now, Paul did not tell them to do this. He did not organize this, but it was something that, that was organic. It came up from the people. They were so enlightened to who Jesus is and to the, the falsehood of their paganism that they brought their book of magic in the occult and burned them publicly. And, and if you translate the the cost of those books and their fetishes and so on, it comes to about $3 million in, uh, uh, in, in contemporary uh, money or funds. So Paul saw a great move of the Holy Spirit, a great harvest in the city of Ephesus. And now this is a letter that he's writing as a follow-up uh, 
to the people of Ephesus. And we know that Paul's letters were, they, they were copied and they were circulated in the different churches. And so this letter would have been in, read in Ephesus. It would have been copied and circulated in other churches. You say, well, now, how, how do you know that happened? Well, we know that from different sources, but we know it from Paul himself. Uh, I will confirm this to you and just turn over to his letter, which was also written around the same time as Ephesians. And um, he uh, and is about 100 miles away. Uh, the same courier delivered the letter to uh, the church in Colossae that delivered it to the one in um, Ephesus. And in his letter to the church in Colossae, listen to, to what he says. Verse 16 of chapter 4 of Colossians. He says, Now when this epistle is read among you, see that it is also read in the church of the Laodiceans, and that you likewise read the epistle from Laodicea. Now, you, we know about Laodicea from the book of Revelation uh, in the letters to the seven churches that Jesus had John to pen. Laodicea was the lukewarm church. Yeah, it was a real town, a real city. And it was 10 miles. It was very close, 10 miles from the city of Colossae. And so Paul says to the Colossians, now when this epistle or letter is read among you, see that it is also read in the church of the Laodiceans and that you likewise read the epistle from Laodicea. So Paul wanted what he read to one church to be read in other churches as much as possible and be circulated around. And and this is how we come to have so we don't have the original letters that Paul wrote, but there were so many copies of them. There was they were considered of such value that there were so many copies of them that were made and continued to made by by uh, succeeding generations that now we have thousands of manuscripts of Paul's letters and and, and of the New Testament, which means that we are able to accurately reconstruct what Paul wrote and what the other biblical writers wrote. This can be said of no other ancient book. The Bible is alone and unique in this regard. And so Paul is writing to them. And let me just begin. We'll read the first first few verses uh, beginning today. And he says, Paul, an apostle. Apostle was at this time was not a church office. Uh, an apostle in the Bible literally means one who is sent. And an apostle was someone who had received a commission from the Lord. And uh, their authority came with the commission. Uh, it was not a, a uh, ubiquitous authority. Is that the word I'm looking for? It was not a, an authority that related to everything and everybody everywhere. No, it was an authority related to the commission. And Paul was an apostle. He had been sent to the Gentile world to share the good news of the Jewish Messiah who had come and died for the sins of the whole world. He was a sent one. And uh, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God. So it wasn't something that he concocted. It wasn't something that he organized and strategized and planned. No, this was something from heaven. This was a, this was a God thing. And may all of us, may our ministries, may we, may we minister out of the will of God and according to the assignment and the calling that he has given each one of us. And it's from Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God to the saints who are in Ephesus and faithful in Christ Jesus. This word saint is a derivative, a form of the Greek word hagias, uh, which is often translated as holy or sanctified or hallowed. And it literally means to be set apart, to be set apart for a special purpose. In the Old Testament, it is the word used in the Septuagint in the Greek translations of the Hebrew Old Testament. Hagias is the word used, for example, for the vessels in, the, in, in Moses' tabernacle in Solomon's temple, they were hagias. In other words, they were set apart for special use in the worship of Yahweh. They were not to be used for everyday meals. They were special. They were marked off and set apart for God's special purposes. 
And Paul is writing, and he refers to the hagias who are in, in Ephesus. In other words, the ones whom God has marked and set apart for his purpose. And I want to say to you in closing, you are not of this world. God has marked you. <laughs> God has chosen you, and he has marked you, and he has set apart you for his own special purpose. You do not belong to this world. Yes, as Jesus himself said, you are in the world, but you are not of the world. Just like him, we are no longer of this world. We're in this world, but we're not of this world. We have, you have been marked and set apart for his own special purpose. Square your shoulders, lift your head. You are somebody because God himself has marked you and set you apart for his own divine purpose. I'm Eddie Hyatt. This is the Eddie Hyatt Podcast. I want to pray a prayer for you today before we go. Father, I thank you for every person listening to this episode today. Lord, I pray that you will fill their hearts with your presence and peace and give them a revelation of who they are since they have put their faith in you, that they really have been marked and set apart by you for your own purpose. Meet their every need according to your riches and glory, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Check out my website at eddiehyatt.com. A lot of resources there that will be helpful to you, and I'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow.